How's it going guys? Angus here from Maker's Muse and just quickly I want to cover two mistakes I made in yesterday's video on drawing the Geneva mechanism in Fusion 360. It's always the case isn't it? There's, no matter how many times you practice something when you go to talk about it on camera you miss things and I missed two important details which would have made that mechanism not work as, as intended. So let me just cover them quickly in this video. I would do annotations normally but YouTube's removing annotations. Fantastic! So, the first thing I made, the first mistake I made was this slot. So, the slot will work, but it's actually deeper than it needs to be, and some of you guys in the comments picked it up quite quickly. And that's because I took the measurement from this line here, which goes back to the center point. But it doesn't actually need to go that far. It actually only needs to go to the edge of the circle here, out to the extent of it. So, with this line, I'm just going to trim it. So, sketch, uh, trim, cut that down. It will freak out a little bit as you can see, but also we've lost the the uh, constraint joining the slot. So I'm just going to select it and select this point and right click coincident. And now it's fine again. So it's still exactly in the same location it was, it's just shorter. So I can now select it and our slot, right click and equal. And everything fixes itself. So the wonders of parametric modeling. I mean, it didn't take much to fix that and it's all back to normal again. So our slot is now a little bit less deep. As I said, it would have still worked, but now this will give you a bit more clearance if you want a bigger bore in the middle of the, whoops, a bigger bore in the middle of the model or something like that. So that's the first mistake I made. Let's uh, stop the sketch. And the second one was really obvious and I don't know how I missed it. I mean, I've made this model work. I don't know how I missed it in the, in the video, but as you can probably tell, our driven gear, as it would rotate, would not clear clear our uh, Geneva mechanism. It's got this circle here and that needs to be cut out. It needs to have the cutout like this one does in the drive wheel to actually ah, to give it clearance. So to do that, let's go back to our original sketch, edit sketch. And essentially what we're doing is taking this circle here and you can see it's cutting out here. That's what we're doing, but it's in the wrong location. We want to cut it as if it was rotated uh, horizontally. So I'm just going to draw a circle, see, from this point out, and then select it, select our main circle of the driven gear, equal. Alrighty, so we've got that circle there, and that's the void we want to remove, therefore it will, when it rotates around, clear the driven wheel. Stop sketch. And if we go to our extrude for our drive gear, edit feature, we can just select those two and remove them like that. Okay. And there you have it guys. So that will now work. So someone did mention animation. That's a really good point. I will go through animations in uh, Fusion 360 in future in terms of using the, uh, the joints. Uh, so you can save these off as components, then they can, they're can they free to move. That's another video though. So thanks for watching guys, hope you found this update useful. Sorry about the, the uh, mistakes I made in the previous video, but as I said, I can't just put annotations in because YouTube's removed them. And one of my subscribers who is on Patreon has actually made a fully 3D printable version of, uh, of this one without needing any bearings or anything, which is cool. And I'll put a link in the video description of where you can go find that on Thingiverse. It's super cool. And as always, guys, if you found this video useful, I'd love for you to subscribe. It does help me out a huge amount. Look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Maker's Muse. Catch you later, guys. Bye.